Hi, and welcome to the 21st Annual National Design Awards Gala. I'm Bobby Burke, and it's great to be your host for the evening. The National Design Awards are presented annually by Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum to recognize innovation and impact of design. Tonight, you'll meet some of the best design minds of our time. A big warm welcome to all those first timers here. And for those of you who attended the gala in years past, like me, thanks for joining us again in this new virtual format. We're so excited that people from around the world are able to share this experience together. We'd love to hear from you and hear from where you are. So be sure to show us some love and your fellow design enthusiasts in the live chat box and on social media using the hashtag National Design Awards. If you haven't visited Cooper Hewitt in New York, definitely go to check it out once it reopens. The museum has amazing exhibitions, design resources, public programs, and an inspiring collection of over 215,000 designs, from ancient Egyptian pottery to contemporary 3D printed objects and digital code. I spend hours in the galleries when I'm lucky enough to get to visit. And if you're not in New York, not a problem. So much of what Cooper Hewitt has to offer is now available online. Tonight, we're kicking off the first National Design Month, which gives you access to free virtual programs throughout October. You'll learn more about the power of design through the eyes of the National Design Award winners, who we're revealing tonight. So to me, design is about making people happy and making their lives better. I still remember the first time I was inspired to be a designer. I was walking the aisles of a Target, and I saw their very first ever collaboration with Michael Graves. And it made me think for the first time that a spoon isn't just a spoon you eat with. A spoon can not only help you eat, but make you happy when you look at it. Spark imagination, spark joy. So right then and there, I thought to myself, I wanna have a part of that. I wanna work in design and make people's lives better through design. So for me, what design is, is all about making the world a better place. On the Netflix show Queer Eye and in my own practice, I've been able to improve people's lives through design and it's been such a rewarding journey. That is why I recognize that celebrating and supporting design is so, so important. We need to be inspired and challenge ourselves to design for a better future. This is what tonight is all about. And we wanna hear from you in the chat. So tell us, what does design mean to you? Put it right there in the chat, wherever it is right now on the screen, put it right there. Cooper Hewitt impacts tens of thousands of people across the country every year. Through design education, focusing on empowering underserved communities to use design as a force for change. This event is Cooper Hewitt's main fundraising event of the year. Your support is so important in ensuring that the museum can continue to provide the essential design resources for everyone now and in the future. Please join me by clicking show your support at the upper right hand corner anytime throughout the evening. A very special thank you to Facebook and Target for making the National Design Awards possible this year. And speaking of awards, thank you to the Corning Museum of Glass who has handcrafted beautiful National Design Award trophies since 2011. I'm so looking forward to recognizing the 21st class of National Design Award winners and celebrating with you all this evening. To kick off the festivities, I'm honored to introduce Rem Duplessis, Group Creative Director at Apple and this year's Jury Chair. Hello and welcome to all. My name is Rem Duplessis and it was a great honor to serve as Jury Chair for Cooper Hewitt's 2020 National Design Awards. This year, for the first time in NDA history, the jury made their deliberations virtually. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow jurors, Siggy, Angie, Shane, Ben, Tony, and Jay, for their dedication, thoughtfulness, and sense of humor that remained intact throughout the virtual jury process. We find ourselves in a generation-defining moment. With so many uncertainties ahead of us, one thing is for sure, the work we reviewed was amazing. On behalf of the jury, I want to congratulate the 2020 National Design Award winners. They are fearless, not afraid to challenge the status quo, and push the boundaries of their practice. They are democratizing creativity in design, redefining innovation. They are poetic and powerful, and they are dedicated to designing a brighter, kinder, and more connected world for all of us. I can't wait for you to meet them tonight. Thanks, Rem. We're excited to meet them too. Can we please give the jury a round of applause, everybody? It's time for our first National Design Award of the evening. The inaugural Climate Action Award brought to you by Lower Carbon Capital is given in recognition of an individual, company, or organization who made a profound contribution in advancing the field. And the winner is Spongebark.
Please welcome Suzanne Gray to accept the Climate Action Award on behalf of the project. Hi, my name is Susanna Drake, and I'm the principal of D-Land Studio. I grew up in Vermont, so I spent a lot of time sort of wandering around in the countryside and really looking at the, the way natural systems work. And I'm also the child of a geophysicist father. So I grew up in this, this atmosphere of idyllic nature and also a uh, degree of explanation of the dynamics of how everything was working together. My definition of design has to do with sort of synthesizing a lot of the analytical skills that I have with the sort of formal and artistic abilities that I have to really make the world work better. You're probably wondering, you know, what is a sponge park and how does it work? Well, what it is, it's a landscape, it's a park, it's a planter, it's a piece of infrastructure, it's a lot of different things. And it's intended to be a public open space. But the great thing about the sponge park is that it's a piece of nature-based design that absorbs dirty stormwater and cleans it before it gets released into the Gowanus Canal. I think the sponge park was a perfect example of how we, we approach a, a problem. Uh, and the problem uh, seemed somewhat sort of scientific or, or almost kind of um, uh, utilitarian on the surface. And it was uh, an issue of, okay, how do we manage storm water in an area that was a swamp, that's now been paved, that is now you know, increasingly attractive for development. But then it turned into something else. And through this research process and through a process of getting to know people in the neighborhood and getting to know different community groups and getting to understand the agendas of all different kinds of people that were gonna use the space, we had to understand all of that. Well, I have to say, I, I am so incredibly honored to um, be the recipient of this award. And it's, you know, this award is not for me, it's for the Sponge Park. So I wanna thank the, the Cooper Hewitt for this incredible honor. And I wanna thank the members of the jury for your work in deliberating what must have been a very challenging process. And I really am completely honored. I do want to recognize a few organizations who were critical to the success of this project. One was the Gowanus Canal Conservancy uh, and the Gowanus Dredgers Boat Club. Uh, the Gowanus Canal Community Development Corporation uh, and the Center for Urban Pedagogy. And I want to thank my former colleague, Yong Kim, for development of the initial design work. And then also my business partner, Sandy Chuck, for making the project a reality. Congratulations to Susanna and SpongeBark and everyone involved. I can't wait to get back to New York to see SpongeBark in action. Next, the National Design Award for Architecture, given to an individual or a firm for the design of public, commercial, and residential interior and exterior spaces. And the award goes to Snowheda. My name is Ilay Molinar. I am an architect and a partner at Snowheda. My name is Craig Dykers. I'm an architect also, and I'm one of the founders together with Elaine and other partners in the studio. I grew up in the Southwest in El Paso, Texas. My early life was filled with dance, classical ballet, which broadened my spatial view of my existence and, and my relationship to space. My father was in the U.S. Army, and I believe I lived in about 17 locations before the age of 20. We both lived in Norway for a number of years as we began the company with our Norwegian colleagues. So we are both American and Scandinavian. Beginning in architecture probably uh, came somewhat accidentally for me. I wanted to be an artist. I wasn't really fully aware of architecture as a profession. I had a broad variety of interests in art in the performing arts as well, in science, in medicine, all sorts of things. 
and architecture has space to allow you to capture all of those a variety of interests. As I began to study uh, architecture, uh, I very quickly realized that uh, this is a larger commitment. It's a passion, it's a way of life, it's a sensibility, it has a, a larger impact on, on us as individuals as well as those who have to interact with the work we create. There are always new challenges, new things to learn. This is a, a vocation where the learning never stops. It's uh, incredibly satisfying to build up skill and knowledge over the years, but to not know exactly how you're going to use it every day. We also strive to create places that people can form personal relationships with. The only way that you can make that successful is to make buildings that are in a sense a canvas for other people to project their own feelings upon. A project that is successful allows people to feel that continuum in their lives. Design is the ability to forge memory in human life, to create something that you can take with you that's not physical, that only exists in your idea of the world as you move through it. This is the power of, of design. This significant award is so meaningful to us because it recognizes that design is not a luxury, but rather an essential component needed for all of society to thrive. It is therefore with great pride that we thank the jurors and the Cooper Hewitt for giving us this award, especially at a moment when it has never been more apparent that design has the power to and must forge change. We'd first like to dedicate this award to the staff in our studios. We are a collective and it is their care and commitment that gives quality to our work. We share the energy of this moment to build on our ongoing commitments to social and environmental justice causes. These include the support of the Black Lives Matter movements and similar actions worldwide. It will remind us to work together to find solutions that benefit the many rather than the few, and we'll use the energy that this award gives us to help us dig deeper into bettering ourselves and the world around us. For over 30 years, we've worked to address the challenges the world faces. From the time we began our practice by reviving the ancient Library of Alexandria and its humanist vision, to our current world where we focus on biodiversity and climate with greater understandings of ecosystems, society, and connections between people. The road has been full of exploration. We are far from perfect, but we have never given up striving to create a just and sustainable place to call home on this little blue ball, Mother Earth. Blessings and peace to everyone. Thank you. Congrats again to Elaine, Craig, and the entire Snowheada team. You are doing such remarkable work for people and for the planet. Now the award for communication design, which is given to an individual or a firm for the design of information and messages. Let's meet our 2020 winner, Scott Dadich. Hi, my name is Scott Dadich. I'm the founder and co-CEO of Godfrey Dadich Partners. I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. I went to school in mechanical engineering. I was miserable. And so I dropped out of school and got a job as a baker at a bagel shop. I stayed up all night and I cranked up some music and I hand lettered all the menu boards. And uh, one of our regular customers admired the boards and she asked who had done them. And Marion pointed at me in the back and I'm there making bagels. And so Sonia went back to the back and introduced herself and gave me her business card and told me that she was an art director at a local communications agency. And she offered me an internship and she said that she had gotten her start as a sign painter. I ended up accepting the internship and that was the beginning of my path in design communications. I got to do a number of things. I got to direct a TV commercial. I got to direct uh, ad campaigns, design communications and brochures and design logos. And all of it was hugely compelling to me. Design to me is about intentionality. It's about putting decisions together one after another. And ultimately the best designs tell stories. I think the greatest contributions to design come from empathy. They come from listening, from researching, from seeking to understand another person's point of view and the stories that emerge from those connections. I am humbled by this recognition. My deepest thanks to the jurors 
and to the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum for recognizing, teaching, and celebrating the power of design. I've been fortunate to collaborate with many remarkable visionaries who taught me how design empowers truth and who are always willing to take a chance on me. I'm eternally grateful to Sonia Yuck. Before I even knew that design could be a career, she opened the first door that set me on my life's path. To Evan Smith for my big break at Texas Monthly, and Chris Anderson, who asked me to write a new future for Wired as creative director. To Tom Wallace for believing in my vision for digital journalism at Conde Nast and later naming me editor-in-chief of Wired. To my dear friends, Dave O'Connor and Morgan Neville, with whom I created Abstract, The Art of Design. And so much appreciation to Netflix for believing in the power of design and sharing it with a worldwide audience. And to the abstract designers, many of whom are previous NDA winners, who allowed the entire abstract team to tell their stories. You all taught me so much. To Keith Yamashita, a hero of mine for more than a decade, leading a business for impact and empathy, now my colleague in the Q Collective. To my brother, Patrick Godfrey, our partners, and the entire team at Godfrey Dadich, for their commitment to design excellence and problem solving on behalf of our clients. And finally, to my wife, Amy, none of this would have been possible without you as my partner, my best friend, and inspiration. I share this honor with my entire extended family of creative collaborators and dedicate the award to the next generation who will no doubt solve so many of the issues we face today through smart design. I hope this community can continue to inspire them and provide them with opportunities, as a kind soul once did for this former bagel shop employee. Congratulations, Scott. I am a huge abstract fan. I'm now honored to introduce Lonnie Bunch, Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution. Hello, I'm Lonnie Bunch, the Secretary of the Smithsonian Institution and I'm so pleased to be a part of tonight's festivities. I know that this was not an easy thing to pull off in the middle of a pandemic. So thank you to all who made tonight possible. I've always said that one of the great strengths of museums is that we bring people together. During the long separations of the past few months, these moments have been fewer and farther between. That's why tonight's celebration feels particularly poignant to me. Despite the challenges facing our country, events like tonight anchor us in our communities. They remind us to delight in each other and in each other's successes. They remind us to celebrate the progress we have made and the change that we can make. The Cooper Hewitt has always embodied the spirit of innovation, of optimism, of creative impact. These past months, as the Smithsonian has raced to adapt to unforeseen and unprecedented challenges, this museum has led the way. Cooper Hewitt staff work with doctors, nurses, designers, architects, and other professionals to understand how design thinking can boost pandemic response. Together with our partners, this museum is reimagining and redesigning a post-COVID world. Since the National Design Awards launched in 2000, it has celebrated the mission of Cooper Hewitt to educate, inspire, and empower through design. Tonight's program reminds us that innovation and impact go hand in hand. The National Design Awards ask us to expand our vision, to reach for the creative solution. That is why we're so delighted to honor the 2020 National Design Award winners. Tonight's awardees prove the power that design has to change the world. In the midst of extraordinary adversity, they are leading us forward. So on behalf of the entire Smithsonian, let me say congratulations. Thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Secretary Bunch, and welcome back. Now the award for digital design given to an individual or a firm for the design of interactive digital products, environments, systems, experiences, and services. The 2020 award goes to Design.io.
Hi, my name is Emily Gobiel, and I'm the co-founder and creative director of Design.io. And my name is Theo Watson, and I'm also a co-founder of Design.io. I would spend my time in, on a very rainy, cold coast in, in England, routing water at the beach. Growing up, I spent a lot of time outside in the woods exploring. The work that we're creating now is recreating those experiences that I had as a child. When we were both studying in the design technology program at Parsons School of Design, I was working on uh, children's media and thinking about ways that interactivity could be used to enhance storytelling and learning. And Theo was working more on computer vision systems and, and more in this intersection of code and art and sound design. And it was kind of the work that we were pursuing in school and our shared passion for creating experiences that elicit the sense of wonder and delight um, through interaction that really brought us together and, and led to the work that we're creating today. We came together and created this space that was the intersection between design and technology, especially kind of around immersive experiences. Specifically, my role is sort of thinking more about the technological integration. Design is an experience that is seamless. What's being felt, what's being shown around you, there's no break in that experience. It's just absolutely true. I really kind of enjoy thinking about what's missing, kind of what's lacking, either in a particular context or just in the world in general, and thinking about what could we do individually and collectively to sort of fix that or address that. We'd like to thank the National Design Award jury, the Smithsonian and the Cooper Hewitt for this amazing honor. We feel so delighted to be recognized for doing work that we love and are passionate about. And we'd like to thank our amazing team, Nicholas Hardiman and Anna Cataldo, you two rule. Thank you so much. And I would also like to thank Sven Travis and Colleen Macklin, who led the program at Boston School of Design where Emily and I studied. It had just the right balance of chaos and opportunity to explore the unexplored. Uh, I'd also like to thank Zach Lieberman and Golan Levin for shaping the world of code and art and being so generous with their time and opportunities. All of the people and clients over the years who patiently listened to us explained our harebrained ideas and given us the go ahead anyway. And finally, I'd like to thank the Open Frameworks community and other open source creative coding communities whose members all over the world contribute to improving the tools we use for our work and helping us solve seemingly impossible problems. Thank, Thank you. you so much. <laughs>
and actually like, you know, creating things for people that are from all different types of places. I mean, I think that that's the big thing that's changing in terms of design or that needs to be considered. I think for a long time, design was thought of as ending in a form. Uh, and I think it's becoming really evident that it doesn't end in the form. The mode of distribution determines the form, the person making it and who it's intended for, its social dynamic, what it actually does within the fabric of social life are part of the form. They're not just like an afterlife. You have to start to reconsider the thing itself as including all of that. I'm just working in a way that's like making me happy and is making the environment around me happy. I want to say thank you to the Smithsonian and the National Design Award for this acknowledgement. Um, of the work and contributions that we've made to fashion. I'd like to thank my team at Telfar, and that's it. Congrats once again, Telfar, but back and everyone at Telfar. Yes, design for everyone. The 2020 National Design Award for Landscape Architecture, given to an individual or firm for the design of outdoor environments and urban planning, goes to OJV Landscape Architecture. Congratulations and welcome to the founder, Jim Burnett. Hi, my name is Jim Burnett. I'm the founder and president of OJV Landscape Architecture. I have seven amazing partners and 90 team members in five offices across the country. We're designers of many things, but most importantly, we design cities, and that includes streets, parks, gardens, all spaces within the public realm. I always like to create things. I wanted to be an architect originally, and in college I found landscape architecture at LSU. It felt like it was more of a collaboration with nature, which was more fluid and more dynamic and uh, that felt better to me. After college, I worked for a large firm and there was a lot of little puzzles to be solved and it was a very inspiring and uplifting place. But ultimately, I realized that it was time for me to kind of forge my own path. I started the practice in 89 and I started my own deal. For our team, it is a promise that we can make transformations that affect those who experience the spaces we design. We can change cities and the way people interact with them. We can unite communities. We can conserve and shine a light on our valuable natural resources. And we can create environments that inspire people to change their perspective. I think that we have better chances of tackling the higher order types of challenges that are happening with climate, with social issues and cultural issues. I think that we, we really are looking at things in a broader perspective now, so we're not making judgments uh, as quick as we used to, bringing in experts. We're looking at the sciences in a much more in-depth way. Design is the chance for change. It is the analysis and understanding of a condition along with solutions to make change. We live a very design life, and most things we interact with are part of the design realm. So good design translates to a better life better systems, better comfort, and even better beauty and inspiration. We make meaningful contributions to design by inspiring others to look beyond the obvious solution. We consider a lot of forces, including the cultural, social, environmental, and economic impact of our work. We're thrilled to be receiving this award tonight, a company of designers forging innovation across all disciplines. This award from Cooper Hewitt is especially meaningful because it affirms the power of design. And that is what our practice is about. A steadfast belief that design can and should change the world. Now more than ever, we have a responsibility to address the issues of access, equity, and health in our shared public spaces. These are not static ideas. They are living, growing, and changing spaces that are essential to our well-being. I'd like to thank our amazing team, our talented collaborators, and especially our clients who have given us the opportunity to make the unseen seen. Their faith has given us freedom to explore and create moments of beauty, which are the goals of every designer. Thank you to the design jury for recognizing our aspirations 
and to the Cooper Hewitt for encouraging designers to make an impact in the world. We're honored and challenged to continue this vital shared mission. I'm constantly marveled by all the public spaces. Congrats again to Jim and everyone at OJB. It's now my pleasure to welcome John Davis, Interim Director of Cooper Hewitt, to share a bit more about the museum. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. My name is John Davis, and I'm the Interim Director of Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum. I'm truly delighted that we are able to come together to celebrate the power of design to build a better future for us all. I want to offer my congratulations to all of tonight's winners. You have inspired viewers around the world with your extraordinary work. I also want to thank our esteemed jury for their thoughtfulness and invaluable expertise in selecting this year's winners. As part of the Smithsonian, Cooper Hewitt is here to serve the nation. Even as our campus in New York City remains closed, we continue to connect people everywhere with meaningful design and the opportunity to learn from it. Tonight, we kick off National Design Month, which is Cooper Hewitt's flagship education program. We are happy to offer many ways for audiences everywhere to learn from this year's award winners and other distinguished designers. Please visit our website to explore four weeks of free virtual workshops, talks, tours, and much more. None of this would be possible without the dedication and passion of our Board of Trustees, staff, and supporters like you. Thank you all for helping us move forward our mission to educate, inspire, and empower people through design. For those of you who are not familiar with Cooper Hewitt, or if you simply miss roaming through the galleries, please enjoy the following snapshot of the place we call home. Thank you, John. I know I speak for everyone in saying that we cannot wait to explore the galleries again soon. And the National Design Award for Product Design. This award is given to an individual or a firm for the design of goods, furniture, lighting, and materials. Please join me in welcoming this year's winner, Catapult Design. I'm Angela Harish, I'm the CEO of Catapult Design. My name is Heather Fleming, and I'm one of the co-founders of Catapult Design. I'm Noel Wilson, I'm an industrial designer. I'm Adam Horbinski, I'm a product designer. My name is Karin Carter, I am a product designer. I'm Payan Lemoyle, I'm a design engineer. I'm Nadine Foyk, I'm a design manager. I'm Charlie Sellers, I'm a technical specialist. Myself and four other co-founders created Catapult Design in San Francisco back in 2008. All of us were craving more meaningful work. I was born and grew up on the Navajo Nation. I would say from a pretty early age, I recognized social injustice and wanted to figure out a way that I could tackle that in my career. We created this design team that developed new products and new technologies for Engineers Without Borders projects and also nonprofits around the globe. What is design? It's um, getting people to imagine something with you. Design uh, allows us to add a human element to some of the sciences that may have I've lost this. To me, design is about connecting people, connecting ideas. In order to allow people to live a more fulfilled life through products and services that actually work for them. Design is holistic thinking. Holistic means that we look at the big picture when we develop solutions. Big picture means that it's a multidisciplinary. And multidisciplinary means that we work with lots of people with different specialities and different levels of focus within those specialties. We come into a project not knowing 
um, about a topic, but we leave an expert. And that, to me, that's really exciting because you're, you're constantly changing. We just have to dive in. If we're feeling a little bit queasy at the beginning, that's perfectly normal. And then we do become experts and the field grows. Catapult Design is a, a very small firm that just won a very, very big award. Uh, so we are, we are very humbled. Um, and in fact, it's, it's rather difficult to think of a, of a bigger honor, actually. Um, so we want to thank you to um, Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian. Um, thank you to all of the um, wonderful designers, um, past and present, um, who have worked on all the wonderful projects. Uh, thank you to the board, to our advisors, to our clients and our partners, past and present. We would really like to dedicate um, this award to all of the underserved populations around the world that are not getting the recognition that they deserve for their expertise and their capabilities. But we see that changing. Uh, Catapult sees it every day. We feel it every day and we design for it every day. So thank you so much to um, Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian for this wonderful award. We appreciate it. To have people all over the world contributing perspective and sharing ideas can only lead to great design. Congrats to Angela and the entire Catapult design team. Now we look to the future with the National Design Award for Emerging Designer, given a recognition of a designer who has demonstrated profound talent in the early stages of their career. The 2020 winner is Studio 189. I am Abrima Aria. I co-founded Studio 189 with Rosario in 2013. And um, we are both creative directors. Well, we first met when we were teenagers. We became a bit closer in our 20s and um, collaborated together quite a lot. Abrima approached me about an idea of wanting to work in Africa and specifically saying, why is it, you know, she's working for all these major brands out of Europe and why is something made in Italy valued just because of the label made in Italy and not the same thing happening for the different countries doing the exact same kind of handwork and why is that? Why is Made in Africa considered charity? And I invited her to the Democratic Republic of Congo for the opening of the City of Joy, a rehabilitation center for women who've been affected by violence. These were women who were the most marginalized in that country who are now recognizing they're no less Congolese just because they're women and that they have rights and they have power and they're working with each other. And we've got thousands of graduates now and it's just to see transformation that's possible when you invest in people and you empower people to recognize their own power. And we were just really moved and just being empowered ourselves to go, well, we could go into business. We could create a company. We could work with these women. There came the birth of Studio 189. Our last collection was called Heritage, you know, very intentionally because we wanted to really take a moment to recognize. We come from cultures that are very steeped in storytelling and narration. And the more you learn about the history of making textiles and making clothing, the more you realize how cultures migrated and that happened with our clothes. Indigo, you know, indigo from West Africa, the indigo plantations that were part of the slave trade. And it's very powerful. So by kind of taking back indigo and putting it in our supply chain and working with the artisans that have been doing it for generations, it feels like we're kind of re-empowering these messages. Can we make the invisible visible? Can we make the impossible possible? Can we encourage you to dream bigger than you thought you could dream? I think humanity is a huge part of our design process. Design is art, um, creativity made manifest, something that can be a, an expression of your values. We don't just make things to make things and we don't make excess of things because we know that there is too much of that already in the world. Together we can make something really, really beautiful and really powerful that you want to have, that you feel really good about having, that has an energy itself because so many people touched it and loved it before you bought it and brought it home with you. Thank you to Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum for this Emerging Designer Award. We are so thrilled. I mean, this has been a huge highlight for us with the pandemic and all of the, everything that's going on in the world. To get that phone call really gave us the motivation and the, the, the support that we needed. 
to remind us that we were on the right path. We're honored that you saw our design and that you recognized it and valued it. And on behalf of all the people we work with in West Africa and the U.S. and overall in our families, we are humbled and thank you for this award. And I want to say I thank you so much, Abrima, um, for loving me and for bringing me on this journey, um, and so that I can I can you know retire at some point in life knowing that I got to be a businesswoman. <laughs> um, and and something that I hadn't maybe ever thought of myself really being. And um, it's been an honor and a privilege to work with you and create with you and design with you. I love you. Love you too. Thank you so much. I'm so glad we got to do this together. And thanks to the jury. That's yes, thank I you so much. That. We know it's all about voting. All the time, always. We vote with our dollar, we vote with our time, we vote with our energy, and you voted for us to get this award and we cannot say thank you enough for this recognition. Yeah! Abrima Rosario, we can't wait to see where Studio 189 goes from here. Congrats. And with that, we've come to the final award of the evening. The National Design Award for Design Visionary, given a recognition of an individual, company, or organization who has made a profound contribution in advancing the field. And the 2020 winner is Kickstarter. Please welcome CEO Aziz Azan. Hi, I'm Aziz Hassan, the CEO of Kickstarter. I've been at Kickstarter for a little over two and a half years now, but the company itself was founded you know, back in 2009. And I think what was really interesting uh, at that time was the need for creative work, obviously is really clear. What's just amazing about just the need for art and creative expression in general is that that need is so human and it's so tied to who we are that it actually just never goes away. Any creative project or any idea that you have has a lot of the core elements of just design in general. And so when I think about, you know, maybe on a macro level, all the projects that show up on Kickstarter, every one of them has a facet of design and thinking in this way uh, built into it. Knowing that kind of no matter what happens, I think in the world around us, this connection and this need to create remains ever present, you know, really keeps us excited. We are a platform and a vehicle for all these ideas to come to life, but it is the totality of all those ideas and the volume that we've seen over the last decade. This is meaningful work. And I think a recognition like this, I'm really humbled to accept because it proves to all those creators that it's worth it. When I think about all the designers who are out there, thinking about if their idea is worth it, should they take the risk? Should they try it? Is it even any good? I wanna tell each of you, you should definitely take the shot. These ideas are what society thrives on. It's how we see beauty, it's how we see curiosity, it's how we explore the world around us. And so in these moments, especially when right now, I think it's so hard to choose if you really should launch your idea into the world. I wanna tell you, you should. There's a group of people out there who are curious about similar things like you, who wanna see your idea come to life. They may not know you and you may not know them yet, but there's an opportunity for you to bring that idea to them and get that support. And I think the world is better because of it. It's an honor to be here with you and accept this award on behalf of Kickstarter and our team. We have a very simple mission. We help bring creative projects to life. And we exist to help the artists, the filmmakers, the musicians, and creators from all walks of life bring their ideas to reality. Every creator on our platform gets to retain their creative control, to have their creative independence, and actually find support in people, in, in funds, and build a community around them that's exceptionally vibrant and curious. I also want to thank the National Design Award judges. You've recognized the intrinsic value that we've always known in our hearts is so important for the world to see. That these projects, these ideas, these designs really make an impact on society. And I also want to thank the passion and dedication of our staff today and the staff that has been with us over the past decade plus. Your blood, sweat, and tears have gone on to bring all these ideas to life. And to the creators who trust us with their ideas. It's always inspiring and it gives me hope to see that these types of ideas can exist and they can flourish in the world around us. And the backers that are out there, 
I appreciate the fact that your curiosity seems to know no bounds. You wanna see these ideas, you wanna support them, and at the end of the day, you wanna help bring these ideas to life. It's an honor to be here with you all, and thank you so much for this award. We've come full circle. One more huge round of applause for this powerful group of 2020 National Design Award winners. Sponge Park, Snowheda, Scott Dadich, Design.io, Telfar, OJP Landscape Architecture, Catapult Design, Studio 189, and Kickstarter. Before we close this evening, I'd like to welcome Cooper Hewitt Trustee Chairman, John Awada, to say a few words. Good evening. I'm John Awada and I'm the chairman of the Cooper Hewitt Board of Trustees. It has been a wonderful evening and let me congratulate our honorees. From social impact to climate action, your work is a testament to the power of design to shape the world. To say the least, 2020 has been an unforgettable year and it's not even over yet. Now more than ever, we are asking ourselves, what kind of world do we want to live in? What do we value? How can we create a healthier, more equitable, and regenerative society? Tonight, we've seen how some of the best design minds of our time create solutions to the challenges we face today and will face tomorrow. Design is not a luxury. It is a skill for problem solving and improving lives, and it's never been more important. That's why my fellow trustees and I are asking for your support. Cooper Hewitt is more than a museum, it's a design resource for the nation. Our cutting edge exhibitions, learning tools, virtual talks and workshops, and National Design Month programs all work together to build and activate your design knowledge. Cooper Hewitt inspires students, educators, designers, and lifelong learners everywhere and empowers us all to design a better future. Your help is crucial in ensuring that Cooper Hewitt continues to offer these resources for future generations. So please, click the button on your screen right now to show your support. I believe in the transformative power of design. I've seen this proven over and over again in my career and in my life and right here with tonight's winners. Please join me in supporting this essential cause. Thank you for celebrating the National Design Awards, and thank you for being an advocate for design. Thank you, John, and thank you all for coming together for tonight's celebration. Remember to click Show Your Support to support Cooper Hewitt's mission to educate, inspire, and empower through design. Design doesn't end here. Be sure to check out the free virtual programs throughout National Design Month to learn more from the National Design Award winners in talks, workshops, career fairs, and more. Sign up at cooperhewitt.org. What a night. I'm already looking forward to next year's program. If you know a person or organization who deserves to be recognized with the National Design Award, let us know by clicking nominate in the site menu. On behalf of the entire Cooper Hewitt team, thank you and have a good night. <laughs>